Hello, and welcome to Dinner Peace Theater. My name is Tom Hitchcock. No, it's not. Uh, it's Tom Schock. This is Ottawa Eats on Rogers TV, and we're in this beautiful restaurant that you may have never even noticed before, because it's off to the side-ish in the market. Today, we're at Side Door. Let's go and meet Jonathan. So many stairs here. Hi and welcome to Ottawa Eats. This is the lovely Jonathan, as you can see, he's right before us. He's real, he's not a figment of your imagination. We're at Side Door today. Um, tell us what makes this place unique. Why am I coming here? I think the best thing about Side Door is we offer a unique perspective on uh, local ingredients here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. So we try to take everything that we have and manipulate it, manipulate it to give you the flavors that you would find in either Southeast Asia, all the way through India, even in uh, South America. All right, uh, what makes you, you? How did you end up here? I don't want your entire life story, but maybe uh, what was it that really piqued your interest in, in food and in, in, in creating things for people to eat? Uh, I love the experience of cooking with people. Mm -hmm. Like um, obviously cooking with my family was the first one. And I always found the, the joy of cooking was the act of it not so much the consumption. So I've learned to be able to sit now and enjoy yeah. eating, but yeah. uh, the act of cooking is something I, I truly love. Was there one person that really kind of just said, that really triggered it for you, that kind of gave you that love of cooking? Was there sort of like, um, you know, Wayne Gretzky, it was Walter Gretzky, it was his father. Well, who was it for you? Uh, it was my mom. Yeah? My mom and my grandma, yeah. And they forced you into the kitchen? Jonathan, you're, going, you're, you're, you're making dinner tonight. Well, they tried to get me out, and I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> allow it. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see what, uh, what mom taught you. All right? It's Ottawa Eats on Rogers TV. This is Jonathan, he is the executive chef. Jonathan, thank you so much for having us here. This is Absolute Side Door pleasure. and this is a huge kitchen. Yes. Uh, beautiful Absolute. kitchen. Uh, thank we're, you. We're gonna be using every single piece of equipment in here today. Every single one, yes, yeah. it must get used. Yes, uh, every plate, every fork, every knife, everything. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about what we're gonna be making today. Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna do a few very nice uh, seasonal salad type dishes. Okay, cool. Uh, we very have nice. a bunch of lovely farms out there uh, here in Ottawa, and mm -hmm. their hot houses are now full and abundant. Right. So we have uh, tomatoes from hot houses, we have peppers, zucchinis, cucumbers, all this lovely stuff, mm -hmm. and a few things that are actually growing on the field as well. We're gonna mix that all together. Very cool. Now, uh, we should mention that, uh, I was talking about this before we started shooting, but you have some really great pickled stuff here, fermented stuff, I mean. Yeah. You yeah. guys do all this stuff here in-house, you have, you have stuff like Absolutely. this. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, we have a bunch of random jars of uh, stuff that's always fermenting mm -hmm. upstairs at 18. And you can uh, give them a smell, because they're, they smell a lot different from your average pickle. Wow, that's really, really good. It's, it's I might even drink that later. <laughs> we have before. It's a fascinating <laughs> science and it's extraordinarily healthy for you. Really? To it's, drink it? Uh, yeah, it's, well, it's full of uh, lactobacillus, this wonderful bacteria. That I'm, I'm gonna pretend to know what that is. <laughs> it's, so. uh, uh, it's just a, a little hungry bacteria that thrives in eating sugars up. Oh. So anything that you put in there, eat up sugars and vegetables or little fruits, whatever it is, mm -hmm produce either carbon dioxide or create an environment where bacteria can't grow. And depending on your salt concentration, it's a long, fun, geeky thing to talk about. <laughs> long story short, it's really good for you. And a lot of doctors prescribe this in pill form to people that have either stomach really? upsets. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, if you're not feeling so hot, come on down and have a big old cup of fermented juice. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but we are gonna see some of this <laughs> stuff included in the, in the different dishes you're making today, but what's the yes. first thing we're gonna make here today? Uh, the first thing we're gonna make today is a uh, salad. Uh, it's called a tomato tonada. Okay, so it's tomato kinda, tomata? Tomato uh, tomata, it's a uh, yeah. Potato, potato? <laughs> what's one of those? It's yeah. kind of a play on, a, uh, a play on the uh, vitello tonada, so okay. veal with tonado sauce. Okay. Tonado sauce is a very classic Italian um, sauce made of normally espagnola, aioli, sorry, and uh, canned tuna. Okay, it's so that's something that if you've never heard it before, now you know. So it's tonada with an N? Tunada. T-U-N-A-A-T-A. Yeah, I'd like to buy a vowel. <laughs> so how does this all come together? What, what are we doing first here to get this set up? Okay, first thing, we're going to make the tonada sauce. Mm -hmm. Now you can use canned tuna. Right. right. That's the traditional way of doing it. 
Um, but we're going to use this really cool stuff. This is a uh, Thai approach to curing fish. So what we've done here is we soaked it in um, some salt, some sugar, some fish sauce, some chilies, and then we've basically fermented it oh, wow. and smoked it. And you get this absolutely gorgeous smoky flavor that comes out of it. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That smells amazing. It's so subtle, so it's a sweet too. Very nice. This is one of my absolute favorite things, to either to take with me on the road if I'm doing off-site chef functions, mm -hmm. um, just to show the versatility of Canadian ingredients and making them taste a little mm -hmm. bit different. You know? So this would be a nice little spin, and if you had to bring salad to work, a lot of people do that, especially in the summer, this would be something that maybe you would want to look into, right? Yeah, and you know what? Like I find trying to eat either a vegetarian diet or people are trying to do a vegan diet, mm -hmm. they'll have problems getting that like satiated feeling like right. when you eat like yes. a good cheeseburger yeah, exactly. or steak. Yeah, like, you yeah. feel full. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So having something that's really kind of uh, like smoky and rich mm -hmm. will make that salad that you take to work a little bit more satisfying. Yeah, it's got a great smell too. And by the way, that is the biggest whatever you call it here. What is this called? Uh, this is a mortar okay. and this is a pestle. And it's a weapon. <laughs> it's impressive. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Well, this is a, a very, very ancient way of... Do you do a battle cry when you're doing that? <laughs> Because it could be like a big weapon, like a William Wallace kind of thing. <laughs> I had a... FREEDOM! <laughs> it might be a little much. Uh, yeah. you know, it's actually a pretty good workout if you get into it for quite a while. I, I, I wouldn't. Very nice. Um, so, we have, our, uh, we have our tuna here. This has all been kind of mashed up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to pop it in this little bowl. Sneaking a piece, sorry. Yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, I would eat that just like that. We're going to add a uh, lemon aioli. So this is just uh, a mayonnaise that we've made with a whole lot of uh, lemon zest and lemon mm -hmm. juice. A little bit of garlic. And uh, this is some buttermilk creme fraiche. Just to give it kind of that, like, you know, almost cheesy richness in the mouth. I can't really talk right now because I'm slobbering so much from that little piece of chicken. <laughs> that is it makes amazing. your mouth water. Yeah, it does. It? It's so good. That's the power of fermented food. Wow. As soon as you eat it, your mm -hmm. the sides of your cheeks yeah, will just pinch in. Hurty things here, yeah. Yep. All right. Very technical term. Very well. When yeah. you're explaining food, normally you can yeah. kind of get outside of the technical because it can become a really, you know, central experience. Yeah. Central. Was yeah. The word. Mm, I like that. <laughs> okay. So. So this is your base, essentially. This is our base. So this okay. is kind of like our. Uh, consider this like most people would have either like goat's cheese or um, any other kind of cheese, bocconcini, mozzarella, mm -hmm. something like that. We're going to use this as that fatty component to cut the acid of these uh, tomatoes. So don't be scared of these very pretty multicolored tomatoes. Yeah. What kind of a tomato is that? Is uh, this specific one. I, I bloody can't remember. It's a Fruit Loop tomato, Tom. <laughs> All right. Well, we get these from Acorn Creek, and there's, uh, I, I, I think I've seen at least 50 different names for tomatoes mm -hmm. since I've been working with Andy. Right. And uh, every single one is a little bit different, but the colors are absolutely spectacular. I should mention this. I mean, I, I've seen this a lot online, especially when people are talking about food waste and how um, the perfect fruit or vegetable needs to be on your grocer's shelf. and people don't usually get something like that. Don't be afraid of produce that's just a little bit imperfect. It's got a little blemish on it. I mean, these, if you were to see these in the store, if people didn't know and you weren't looking for this specifically, you'd think that this is not, this is this is a bad tomato. Yeah, but and like, I don't I don't get it. Like, how could you, how could you not respect it? If you, if you understand a little bit of the science of why this happens, mm -hmm. it's a very natural thing. And right. sometimes it's almost like for a farmer, impossible to control. Yeah. Especially when you have a whole field. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. So we have Very our nice. tomatoes, we have our cucumbers. Um, what else are we gonna put in there? I think maybe a little bit of herbs? Maybe okay. a few of these. Ah, there we go. If we're on a health kick already. This is some uh, red dandelion. This comes right after the, uh, like, the other dandelion, the mm -hmm. ones that you see like everywhere on the street. They're just going through the neighbor's yard and picking their dandelions. Is that what you're doing? I'm actually, yeah. I get out somebody, a farmer, to do it for me. I don't me, know if you know this, but Jonathan is also the weed man. <laughs> we'll come to your house and make sure all the dandelions are picked. Uh, yeah, funny, last time I was home, I was scouring through my parents' yard, and I uh, ended up making breakfast out of morels that I found <laughs> and uh, a bunch of other edible greens. 
and they were freaking out. I couldn't believe that we could feed them off of just what was on their land. Yeah, the lawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lawn food, as they say. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. So there are our greens. We'll Very put nice. a bit of salt on. And maybe a little bit of pepper. And that's about it. You can go wow. the olive oil, lemon juice route, mm -hmm. but there's enough happening in these tomatoes right. and in that tonnado. Don't you mix it. it all up, yeah. you're gonna be some kind of happy. Maybe it's there you go. Tomato, Rabbit tonnado, spices. doesn't matter. It's delicious. That is it. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more peppery bite. There we are. All right, that's it. So simple, so good. <laughs> now can I have the leftover tuna? So I'm just gonna gnaw on that for a bit. Yes, absolutely. Ottawa Eats, Rogers TV, Jonathan, dish number two, what is it? You've already, you've already got me curious with the first one, but what is dish number two? Dish number two, it's another salad, but we're gonna add some meat to this one. Okay. We have some fresh chorizo that we've mm -hmm. made in-house. We're gonna put a fresh sofrito salad on top. All right, uh, chorizo, if people don't know, is? It is a uh, sausage of either Portuguese or Spanish origin mm -hmm. that's made out of pork and beef and contains at least smoked paprika and garlic. All right, so if you're ever looking for it, it's gotta have those ingredients. Basically. Basically. And then after that, you can do whatever. Yeah. All right. So what's step number one? How are we putting this together exactly? Uh, step number one is to grill the chorizo. So this is the fresh stuff mm -hmm. that we've made. You can see uh, some fennel seeds that we put in there and this nice kind of showing of fat. And we also do this. Now this is what people are not used to seeing. This is dry chorizo. So this we also make in house. And I'll show you the difference real quick. So this is something that's been fermented. Mm -hmm for about a month. And this was the same size as this when it started. Wow. We like to play with our ferments here. <laughs> See, for me, uh, growing up in a Swiss household, this was breakfast. Yeah. There right. you go, kids. Figure it out. And get a piece of bread, off you go to school. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Uh, so we're just gonna grill that. I've already grilled ours here. Mm -hmm. You get some good color on there. We've already cooked it, so it's not gonna take too long. Right. You're gonna do this maybe in some fun chunks. This is called a, a roll cut. I've like, never seen that before. It's uh, keep your knife at the same angle. Yeah. And then basically just roll That's this really back once more. Yeah. We were talking about uh, vegetables that people don't use. This yeah. is one of my, f like my favorite part of celery is this, is the absolute insides. It's the leaves. It's the stuff that most people don't like. Yeah. It, it has yeah. this beautiful, uh, I don't know, uh, rich celery aroma is the best way I can put it. So we're gonna use all of this into our little salad. Oh, neat. And all these little sweet, sweet hearts. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit there. So um, the, the sofrito, what, what I was talking about, it is traditionally um, like kind of a stew that's made out of onions, celery, and peppers. Mm -hmm. And this is the basis of uh, a lot of Spanish cuisine, even going into uh, French cuisine as well. Italians, they all use this kind of base. Some add tomatoes, some don't, but it's this beautiful rich stew that keeps for quite a while. I love that you're using uh, not only vegetables that are, I mean, please don't take this the wrong way, but are <laughs> imperfect and a little odd looking, but you're also <laughs> using parts of vegetables that people would ordinarily just chuck in the compost or the garbage. You know, it's, uh, it, if you grow if you grow food for a little while and you start to see how long it takes, how much effort, yeah. like between soil, planting, pruning, whatever, yeah. you, I feel like you should respect this just as much as anything else that you buy. Right. Like you wouldn't throw out half your steak because it kind of looks weird, yeah. you know? Unless it looks really weird and then definitely throw it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, it's important, you know? Try to get the most out of your food because it's not cheap either. Yes, that's very true. Right? I mean, you're looking at what? over four bucks for cauliflower these days or yeah but you know as like I was saying with all this stuff being in the market if you kind of take a little bit of time go through there you can get some absolutely gorgeous produce at extremely cheap mm -hmm. prices cheap being yes relative yeah. term um, so we have a few fun things here these are spring onion tops we're gonna put these in to replace our uh, white onion that we would normally use um, because you know it's available, and mm -hmm. we just got them yesterday. 
from Juniper Farms. I love this. This is my favorite part right here. This right here? Yeah. Do you want it? Oh, yeah. There you go. I love that flavor. <laughs> it's so fresh. You know what? It, it tastes like a spicy green is what it tastes like to me. Very kind of like almost peppery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally, absolutely agree. Not going to be picking up any dates after this, but whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Hello. Uh, we're going to put all of this kind of stuff together in a bowl. Mm -hmm. We'll add um, a few more of our greens here. Which ones do you think we should use? We have a lot. Yeah, you do. I kind of like this arugula and the mizuna. These are kind of peppery and yeah. I think this might go well. I'm a big fan of oregano. Oregano. I don't have any oregano, but I do have Damn. actually. Uh, what is this? I love the spicy, can kick, spicy kick you get from oregano. The fresh stuff. I like that. Well, this is a type of Mexican oregano. We just got this yesterday as well. Is Donald Trump going to build a wall around this? If he does, I'll break it down. Mm. Wow, that's really fresh. Isn't that's it? more like almost like a mint. It's just this bizarre kind of flavor. It's, it's very rare to get. So and we're going kind of with this whole Portuguese -y theme. Yeah, and the leaves are thicker. A little bit, yeah. have more texture to yeah. them. They're mm -hmm. good for drying. So we're going to season this, I think, with a little bit of our fermenting liquid. Mm -hmm. This is from uh, some ramp, zucchini, onions, and celery. So I think this is going to match up well. Just do a little bit, not too much garlic in there. And we're also going to throw some of this in here. I mean, again, something that people ordinarily would pour down the sink. You can use that. You can. And I, I kind of got embarrassed at home. I was telling my girlfriend that, you know, I, I've actually used more fermented pickle juice than the pickles that are in the jar. <laughs> and she kind of rolled Where's her eyes at me. Where's all the juice for the damn pickles? <laughs> uh, sorry. Right? So this is going to be really, really fresh, super healthy, mm -hmm. good for you, satiating all that stuff. Toss this once or twice. And don't be afraid of eating vegetables like this raw. Yeah, but you're gonna get more out of it if you do. You are. As long as you don't eat too much raw food, you don't wanna give your stomach a, a too much of a workout, especially early in the morning. But for lunchtime, this is a great way to get your day going. Here we go. So this is something I would serve probably in the center of a table. Mm -hmm. Um, so that everybody can kind of pick off. And you could serve this with some boiled potatoes or even some eggs. Yeah, and that, I mean, this with the sausage and all these different, I mean, this absorbs a lot of flavor. A lot, yeah. a lot, a lot. Zucchinis are like little sponges, you know? Yeah. We're gonna put a little salt on and just for oh, that last kind of Spanish kick, a little bit of some garlic chili oil that we make here. Oh, wow. Because why not have something a little spicy, right? Nice little twist at the end. Hey. I love it. Perfect. All right, so if people are looking for this on the menu, what's it under? What's it called? Uh, this is going to be uh, chorizo salad with, uh, how, how am I going to word this? God, I don't know yet. It'll be grilled chorizo, fresh sofrito salad. There we go, we coined it right now. Yeah. That's good, <laughs> I like that. Welcome back to Ottawa Eats. I'm Tom Schock. This is Jonathan, the executive chef here at Side Door, and uh, this is an action shot. Action. Yeah. Where's Bruce Willis? <laughs> He's in the back. So what are we making here? What is this dish? Uh, we are making a very, very seasonal dish. Uh, it's uh, stir-fried garlic scapes mm -hmm. uh, with beef, radish. That's it. All right. Very simple. Very simple. I like it. Yeah. Now, garlic scapes, I just asked you this off camera. Right. What is it? Where can people find it, and, and, and why would you use it? Um, garlic scapes are the top, basically, uh, seed beginning of a plant of garlic. So if we don't pick these off, these little tips here, you can see them, um, will continue to grow, turn into seeds, and then fall back into the ground. And what that'll do is kill the garlic that you already have. So it's a good idea for farmers to do I like the texture of them because to me the texture is sort of like a, a green bean. Yep. Um, but obviously it has a very garlicky, a nice peppery, spicy kind of taste to it. Very, very nice. And that's why it lends itself so well to this uh, stir frying. Normally this would be done with uh, either snake beans or long beans. Mm -hmm. But this is just a great way to use what it is that we have right now. 
Whoop. Get out of there. So, we're just going to leave this for two seconds. I'm going to get some little deglazing liquid here. <laughs> More pickles. <laughs> yeah. It never ends here. No. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Let's get a smell of that one. Yeah, you get in there. Oh, wow. Not bad, eh? Yeah. Uh, I love the smell of really rich red vinegar. Okay. I love that, and that's, that's, that's very That's basically nice. it right there. So a little bit of that in there. It's going to give it uh, a, piece, a bit of seasoning, a bit of balance. We don't want to take this beef too, too far because mm -hmm. we've already marinated it a little bit. There we go. And there we go. Now we're going to garnish with some scrunchions. Uh, what's a scrunchion? Scrunchion, uh -huh. if you ever go out east, and they ask if you like scrunchions, you just say yes. Okay. It's uh, basically, it's a bunch of trim from this ribeye that we cut here. Oh. It has a bunch of fat in it. We allowed that to uh, render out. It's basically confit and then fry. So you get this crispy, beefy bite. That's way better than chips. <laughs> so we're going to throw that on. Garnish with uh, some of this baby bok choy, I think. This is still little tiny babies, so mm -hmm. we don't really need to cook it at all. Maybe just a little tat soy too. There we go. There you are. Wow. Easy peasy, right? Yeah, nice and quick and beautiful color. And the, even just, I mean, I haven't tried the whole thing yet, but you can just the texture of ah. the scrunching. See, I thought a scrunching was something you put in your hair. Well, that's another thing. It's a different uh, type of scrunchie. Don't use those. those. No, no, no. <laughs> that's better. Much better. Okay, we're gonna try some of this stuff next, or maybe now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just want to drink all the juice. <laughs> well, we get in there. You gotta eat it while it's fresh, right? Yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. Green is totally a flavor, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's another episode of Ottawa Eats. We have all this beautiful green, fresh food in front of us. Uh, where can people find you to make reservations? Uh, people can find us on Open Table, mm -hmm. uh, side of a restaurant. Uh, you can come visit us in person. We're right in Clarendon Lanes off 18 York, literally the side door of restaurant 18. Yeah. Um, or just give us a call. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you'll get beautiful food like this. Of course, uh, depending on what time of year you're gonna come here, you're always gonna get something a little bit different. And we saw earlier the fermenting and all these wonderful things that go, in, go into it. So you're definitely going to have a very unique experience here. So thanks for watching Auto Eats. Thank you so much for having us. My pleasure. And uh, it's Jonathan, and let's try out some of his work, some of these imperfect, yeah. perfect tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> you have that. I'm going to go for this, I think. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about this all morning. <laughs> so that's going to be my lunch. The tomato and that tuna. Wow. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. The mm -hmm. simple things in life, you know? They're the best. That is amazing.